Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to see how we can add a block of markup which is rendered once for each of the items in our observable array. We can do this using another binding. This time we'll use one of the control bindings, the for each. So let's throw some more markup down on the HTML page first of all. So after the header we can add a section. This is the main part of the application, so we give it a role of main. We can also add a class name. And we add the binding again using the data bind attribute. So this time the binding is called for each, and we just map this to our photos observable array. So now whatever elements we put inside the section will be repeated for each item in the photos array. So we'll start out with a figure, which will be the container for each individual photo. And then inside this, we can add an image. And we'll need to use another data binding here. This time we'll use the attribute binding to set attributes of the image. So this binding differs slightly than the other bindings that we've looked at so far. This binding takes an object and within the object, we can set the attributes that we want to update. So the first one will be the SRC of the image and we can just bind this to the URL property of each of the photos. And we also want to set the alt attribute. And we can also set a figure caption, and this will display the title. And we'll use the data binding on a span inside the figure caption, mostly for styling purposes. And this time we just want to use the text binding once again. Great. So the image element uses the ATTR binding to set the values of different attributes of the element. Notice that we can set two attributes at once using a comma separator. The SRC attribute is set to the URL property of the current object from the observable array, and the alt text is set to the title property. Notice how we can combine the data from the title with an arbitrary string. In this case, the alt text is prefixed with the string an image of. And we also create a fig caption element with a span element inside it that displays the title of the photo, which is done using the text binding to set the inner text of the element. And I just want to point out that the binding context has actually changed here. So in these properties outside of the for each, the binding is set directly to the view model. So we can get the title and description, which are properties of the view model. However, Inside the for each, the binding changes, and the binding will change so that it is in the context of the current item that's being iterated. So the for each binding itself maps to the photos property of the view model, but then inside it changes to each photo. So the binding context inside for each has changed. This is why we, we can just map directly to URL and we don't need to do something like photo.url because we're already in the context of a photo. So Knockout handles this automatically for us. So if we run the page now, we should find that all of the images and their respective titles from the photo set on Flickr are displayed on the page. So let's try it out. Let's get rid of the console for now and the images aren't loading for some reason, so that's... Okay, so... So we need to make an adjustment to our get image URL method. And yeah, it's that comma, I think, which is screwing things up. Awesome. So it's loading all of the images from the photo set and setting the titles. So now, whenever the observable array changes, the photo should be re-rendered. So let's change it and make sure this happens. 
We can add a bit of UI that sorts the photos by title instead of the order in which they are received from Flickr. We can add some more HTML to the page for this. So just after the header, we can add a new div. And we'll give this a class name of controls. And we first want a label. And then we can use a select element. And we'll use a for each binding to create the options for the select box. So remember the elements inside a for each binding will be repeated for each item in the array that they're bound to. So in this case, we're binding to the sorts array. We haven't added this yet. We will do very shortly. And we'll add another binding to the option. We use a text binding. And we'll also use the value binding. And both of these bindings will point to the name property of each sort. So our application will have two different sorts by default. Uh, the default sort is the order in which the photos are received from Flickr. And we can also add a title sort. So to populate the select element, we'll need to add a new observable array called sorts. But we also want to make sure that this is extensible so that developers using our application can add their own sorts if they wish. So first of all, let's add a new property to our default object. And this will be called sorts, and it will just be an empty array to begin with. So these are the two built-in sorts, the default sort and the title sort. So the purpose of this is to add the two built-in sorts to the start of the array. We want the default sort first, as this will be how the photos are originally displayed. And the reason why we use unshift is because it adds it adds items to the start of an array. And we always want these to be first. And this should be a string, not just a value. So each sort will have two properties, the name of the sort and a method that will actually perform the sort. The method will be stored in a property of the sort called sorter. So if the developer wanted to add a custom sort, they could do this by adding a new sort to the sorts option. And they would do that like this. And obviously the function here would contain the logic to actually do the sorting. I'm not going to add anything here because I'm just illustrating how it actually works. So let's just log the sorts option. And what's going to happen if we try to run this now is that we'll get a script error saying that default sort and title sort are not defined. So these are going to be private methods of our application. So let's just add the names of the methods up here. Default sort and title sort. So we'll add the logic for these in the next lesson. Let's just get the code running so I can illustrate how the sorts object works. 
Let's go back to the browser now. We'll want the console open so we can see the log statement. It looks like we're already logging something, so let's just get rid of that. It's on line 75. So it's in here somewhere. Let's just get rid of this log statement. Great. Okay, so let's try it out. So here's our sorts array, and it contains three objects. The first one is our default one. The second is the title sort. And the third one is the special sort passed in by the developer. So we're not actually using that. I just wanted to illustrate why we've added the sorts array in the way that we have. So let's go back to the page now and just remove this. And if we refresh again, the sorts array just has two items and these are the two default sorts, the built-in ones that we're going to add in the next lesson. So in this lesson, we looked at using the for each binding to create repeated sections of markup that can be rendered for each item in an array. We used this binding twice, first to actually display the images we received from Flickr along with their captions, and secondly, to populate the select element with an option element for each of our built-in sorts. But we did this in such a way as to easily allow other developers using our app to add their own sorts if they wish. You should note that in Knockout there is actually a binding called Options, which can be added to select elements that allow us to render an option element for each item in an array. However, this only works with flat arrays of primitives such as strings or numbers. In this case we need to use complex objects, which is why we use the for each binding again to handle this. In the next lesson, we can add the built-in sort methods to see how the array can be sorted to update the UI. Thanks for watching.